Well, Philip Yoon is executive director of the Plowshares Fund, a group that is working to eliminate nuclear weapons. He's also a former advisor on North Korea under U.S. President Bill Clinton. Philip joins us via Skype from San Francisco. Philip, good to speak to you once again. On Saturday, North Korea is due to mark the 105th anniversary of the birth of Kim Il-sung, the country's founding father and current ruler's grandfather. Do you share the expectation that the North will carry out a nuclear or ballistic missile test, even with the USS Vincent there off the Korean Peninsula? Well, it's not clear what North Korea is going to do on April 15th before on around, but you can expect they will do something. There's speculation that there will be either a missile test or a nuclear test. We know that the testing grounds for the nuclear, uh, where they normally have the nuclear test, is, is ready. So it really becomes a political decision for the North Koreans to decide when to do this. And for them, it's going to be how are they going to get the most bang for the buck in terms of politically, internally, externally. Uh, and so it, it, it remains to be seen whether, in fact, that will be the case. Uh, you know, the Carl Vinson is a show of force. It's one in which the United States has done in the past, putting aircraft carriers through that region. Um, it is a, a way to assure the allies uh, but I don't think that is going to deter this nuclear test in any way. I think the reality is, is that the North Koreans feel that, uh, that the United States knows it can't really preemptively attack uh, at North Korea um, for a variety of reasons about causing you know, ca you know, un un untold casualties in Seoul. I don't think the South Koreans nor the Japanese would tolerate something like that at this time. Mm. Well, President Trump has been publicly using his bully pulpit to lean on China to do more to rein in North Korea. He put out two tweets um, on Monday. Let's put them up on our screen and share them with our viewers uh, so we can read what he has said in, in these messages. North Korea is looking for trouble. If China decides to help, that would be great. If not, we will solve the problem without them. USA. In the second tweet, he said this. He said, I explained to the president of China that a trade deal with the U.S. will be far better for them if they solve the North Korean problem. So, uh, Philip Yoon, when you see these messages and the president publicly leaning on China in this matter, how will this be seen in China? What's your read? Well, it's, it's great political rhetoric, and I think uh, the Chinese will read this mostly that it's for, for U.S. domestic consideration um, and consumption. I think the reality is, is that the Chinese, uh, I don't think, are going to, nor can they lean on North Korea by themselves and solve this problem by themselves. I think most people understand that. Um, and uh, the, as far as the deal is concerned, I'm not really sure what to make of that either. I'm not sure the Chinese are, are sure uh, what to make of it. I know that the Chinese, uh, 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 President Xi and President Trump talked about some of this, but we don't know exactly what they talked about and what they agreed to. But we have to realize the U.S.-China economic relationship, the trade well, trade is only one portion of this. And I think the Chinese in certain ways have as much leverage on the U.S. as the U.S. has on, has on China. And then to connect this with a deal on North Korea, a security-related thing, just strikes me as very odd. And I suspect the Chinese will, will consider that uh, in, a, in a similar light. So, Philip, what are the options here for the U.S.? I mean, they have parked the USS Vincent and other assets off the Korean Peninsula. Um, if your calculation is right and it doesn't act as a deterrent and the North Koreans do go ahead and launch some kind of test, what are the options for the U.S. in terms of a response, knowing that that could rapidly escalate and take this thing out of control? Well, I, I think the first thing they have to do then is realize that they don't want this to get out of control and take steps to uh, take defensive measures, uh, but not necessarily ones that would be considered aggressive by North Koreans or a prelude to a, to a preemptive attack. Um, I think you said the key thing right now is to, to uh, get through this period without a massive miscalculation. Then you have to step back and say, what is it that we can do? And the options are very limited. I've said before, North Korea is the land of lousy policy choices. And realistically, we can continue our policy of sanctions and punishment and pressure as best we can. But it's basically allowed North Korea to be on the verge of having a small nuclear arsenal and a delivery system. Um, and, uh, if we, and we can't preemptively attack or force North Korea to uh, uh, disarm and to get rid of its nuclear program. So the reality is what we have to do is use our use pressure and talk with North Korea as a way to bring them, to get them to have a freeze, to stop 
their nuclear uh, weapons production and to stop missile testing. Uh, North Korea wants certain things, and I believe the formula is giving them security, giving them some respect and legitimacy in what they want, and some economic benefits. That's the formula if we're going to have any chance at all to resolve this issue uh, moving forward. Yeah, the coming day is certainly key to seeing what happens next on the Korean Peninsula. Philip Yoon, Executive Director of the Plowshares Fund, appreciate it. Thank you so much.